Hi everyone, I am Miss Cullum and I am reading chapter 24 of the book Rump. Chapter 24, where there's a will, there's no way. I decided I wouldn't have to leave right away. Babies take a long time to be born, almost a year, so I could wait. As the summer heat cooled and the leaves began to turn yellow and orange and red, my aunts traveled to the markets in turn. They traded their yarns and cloth and tapestries for grain and potatoes and carrots and onions. Ida came back with a bushel of apples and a pot of honey, which Hadel thought was very foolish, but even she couldn't hide her delight at eating apple pies and hot biscuits drizzled with honey. I licked my lips at the sight of all the food stacked in piles for winter. I thought I had time to stay through the winter. One morning, when the first frost appeared, Hadel asked me to help her with a chore. She rarely even spoke to me, so I found it strange that she would ask for my help. But the chore she wanted help with was even stranger. It's time to move the pixie nests. Pixie nests? Move them? Want to get the pixies out just before they're ready to sleep for winter so they're too tired to move back. Why don't you just move them when they're sleeping? Have you ever woken a pixie from its winter sleep? Foolish thing to do. We move them while they're tired, but not sleeping. I watched as Hadel hobbled around and picked up what looked like nothing more than a decaying log. But when she brought it close, I peeked inside and saw a swarm of pixies crawling around, a hundred at least. They yawned and cuddled against each other or wrapped themselves in leaves, feathers, and bits of wool. They didn't seem to notice or care that they were being carried off. If only I had known about this before, I could have moved all the pixies far away from the cottage and the mines. Spring on the mountain would have been a much more pleasant time. Hold this, said Hadel. I will gather others and you will follow me to where we will leave them. She placed the nest gently in my arms and then hobbled off to gather other nests. She picked up a bundle of twigs and grass and reached up into the branches of a tree and brought down a tangled mass. This one looked like a bird's nest, only woven completely shut in a delicate sphere. Another nest was made of leaves and twigs that hung like a basket from a tree. She cradled the nest in her apron. I looked down at the log the log nest in my arms. A pixie had fluttered sleepily to the opening. It chirped and sniffed like a squirrel searching for food. It fluttered its wings and landed on my hand. Oh no, another came and another until half the nest had risen from their sleepy stupor and were crawling up and down my arms and head, chirping and squeaking. One pixie with bright orange hair crawled down my nose, wrapped his hands around my nostril, and looked inside. His wings tickled my nose. I sneezed, and all the pixies shrieked and swarmed around me. Soon, they settled again and continued their exploration. Hadel came around a tree and froze at the sight of me. I think it would have been better to wait until they were really asleep, I said. Stay still, she hissed. I am. Don't move. I'm not. Stop talking. I shut my mouth. With one hand, Hadel untied her apron and gently placed the nest on the ground. She took a bucket and filled it with dirt and walked slowly toward me. I'm going to pour this on you, but don't move until I say. Understand? Don't answer. Don't move. Don't even blink. Of course I needed to blink. My eyes burned and my nose started to itch. I think I needed to sneeze again, and now my eyes were watering. Hadel walked slowly toward me, painfully slow. Tears ran down my cheeks, and the pixies swarmed on my face. The sneeze was burning in my nose. I tried to hold it in, but that only made it worse. I exploded. Achoo! Hadel pounced on me and flipped the bucket on top of me. The dirt poured down my head and face and arms. The pixies scattered and screamed. Hadel took their nest and pulled out the bits of wool and leaves and made a trail for them, leading the pixies away from me to the hollow log. Slowly, the pixies calmed, gathered their bedding, and flew back into the nest. As soon as the pixies had settled, Hadel hobbled to me, her wide eye boring into mine. Has that ever happened before? Of course it had happened before. 
Pixies were always pestering me, but Hadel already suspected that something wasn't right with me, and I wasn't about to give her any more reason to think so. No, I said, Pixies usually hate me. Do they? She seemed amused. Pixies have always been abundant here. They're like shiny things, pretty things, but their numbers seem to be even greater since you have arrived. Like they smelled what they really love. Gold. Gold, I said, as though I had never heard of this before. Yes, gold. They can smell it from far away and deep down in the earth. They smell it like a wolf smells blood, Robert. She lowered her one big eye right level with mine. My heart was beating very hard in my chest so I could hear it pounding in my ears. My name isn't Robert, I said quietly. My mother didn't ever get to say my whole name before she died. No one ever heard all of it, you see. The only part she said was rump. I laughed nervously, but Hadel didn't. She only widened her big eyes. She knew what the name was really supposed to be. Tears burned in my eyes. I didn't want to cry now, not in front of Hazel. I held my breath until the burning stopped. So you've spun, have you? Asked Hadel. Her voice was a little softer now. I nodded. Spun yourself into trouble? A wit. My friend's granny told me that there was a way to get out of it. She said I needed a stilt skin. A stilt skin, mused Hadel. Yes, I've heard of them. Very rare, mysterious magic. I've never seen one, but yes, maybe. Still, even with a stilt skin, it would be difficult. Is there anything else? Is there any other help for it? Hadel put her knobby hand on my shoulder and pressed down. There's only one thing I know for sure about spinning. I waited, my whole chest expanding with hope. When you get your wool tangled in a knot, only a tangler can get it untangled. And with that, she scooped up her apron of pixiness and hobbled away. She did not ask me to help. Is something wrong with Robert? You look pale. Ida brushed her hands on my cheek. You didn't eat. Are you ill? Just tired. Too tired to eat? Hadel glanced up at me but didn't say anything. She didn't tell Ida or Batilda about my name. And somehow this made me feel more hopeless, as if there was no need to explain because there was nothing they could do. Ida sent me to bed early, but no sleep came. I waited for my aunts to settle in, and once I heard their even breath and snores, I crept into the wool room with a handful of straw. The spinning wheel shone in a sil sliver of moonlight. I sat down. It was just a bunch of wood. In my hands was straw, straw and wood, plain and totally unmagical. I tried to feel the magic in the air. I lifted my hands and closed my eyes and pictured pushing all the magic away back into the earth or the sun or wherever it came from. Straw is straw, gold is gold. This straw I hold won't turn to gold. I started pushing down on the treadle and I felt the straw through the, wheel, through the wheel. Straw is straw, gold is gold. The straw turned gold. I broke off the strand of gold and wrapped it around my finger. I tried again. Straw, 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 gold. I ripped off the thread, crushed it into a tiny ball. I would not let the rumple overpower me, but my feet was Hadel's wool basket. I took a handful of wool. Maybe straw always turned to gold, but I could feel wools without magic. Wool is dull, wool is old. No dull wool can shine like gold. I spun with raging speed. If I was fast enough, maybe the magic wouldn't have time to work. I saw a gray strand emerge from the wheel. My heart skipped a beat. It wasn't changing. Then the dull gray lightened and shimmered, and before my very eyes it transformed into a thick, shining thread stretched right over the wheel. Gold. There were rocks in my throat. I broke the head off quickly and jumped away from the wheel, like somehow I had infected it with my curse. I went back to bed with the gold threads wound tightly around my finger, making it numb and tingly. I thought of my mother, holding me at birth whispering my name in my ear. Rumple. 
trapped, tangled, ensnared. But why? Why would a mother who loved her child bestow such a fate upon him? I wanted there to be more. Another explanation. But the more I thought about it, the more trapped and tangled I felt. And I knew that there was nothing more. Only the cruel echo of my name. Rumple, rumple, rumple. And that is the end of chapter 24.